Hong Kong's upcoming election is less about electing and more about selecting. The Chinese government is trying to cross out the candidates it doesn't like. For example, these opposition lawmakers were elected to the Legislative Council in 2016. Now they, along with others, are either in jail or in exile. And the rest, they are not allowed to run because they are not considered patriots, a new rule imposed by Beijing. Being a patriot um, in Hong Kong also means um, to be supportive of uh, Chinese Communist Party leadership, not only over China, but also increasing the over daily life, society and politics in Hong Kong. So being a patriot also means being loyal to the Chinese Communist Party um, to um, a large extent. And to ensure that only so-called patriots can oversee Hong Kong, Beijing has imposed a massive overhaul of the electoral system. All candidates must be approved by a new seven-member vetting committee and pass a screening by the National Security Police. After the change of the electoral systems, the elections upcoming uh, will be totally illegitimate. It has turned into, uh, I mean, the parliament to be elected would have turned into a total rubber stamp of Beijing with no democratic element in it at all. Ted Ho was one of Hong Kong's opposition lawmakers. He's now in exile in Australia, after Beijing imposed the controversial national security law. As a former legislator myself, looking back at the place where I worked and the chamber where I, where I spoke and I fought for democracy with my colleagues, now it's no longer a place that belongs to the people. And so, uh, of course, uh, we have anger, uh, like the Hong Kongers, how uh, Beijing has uh, ruined our, our limited freedom and democracy in the council. Hong Kong's leader disagrees. Carrie Lam, who is seen by many as Beijing's puppet, insists that the electoral changes can ensure the city's stability. Uh, what we are now seeing is uh, deficiencies in the electoral system which um, could be exploited by uh, people, including some external forces. And this is only right uh, in terms of um, political ethics. How could one who is governing a place who is not patriotic to that the country? It is inconceivable. Hong Kong's legislature has never been fully democratically elected. Before the current changes, only half of the seats in the Legislative Council were elected through direct votes. But now, those seats have been further reduced. Under a quarter of the 90 seats will be elected through universal suffrage. Another 40 will be chosen by an election committee composed mostly of pro-Beijing, pro-establishment business leaders. The remaining 30 will be elected through so-called functional constituencies which represent several industries and professions. This expert believes these electoral changes were inevitable after years of protest, which had displeased Beijing. So you had very large demonstrations in 2014 with the Umbrella Movement and 2019, um, and what began as an anti-extradition bill uh, demonstration. But you also had large protests in Hong Kong earlier than that in 2003 and in 2012. And I think what's important about the protests of some of those years is they actually got the government to reverse course on things. So um, Beijing, in some ways, the Chinese Communist Party leadership got frustrated with the fact that even though the local authorities were trying very hard to do things to stay in Beijing's good graces, that there still was more room for this kind of pushback than the Communist Party wanted to see. So in Sunday's election, 153 candidates will be running. A couple of them are standing as independents, but none of them belongs to any opposition parties. Some activists, like Ted Hoi, are urging people to cast blindfolds as a way to protest. Now the electoral system has changed like so ridiculously, and it's meaningless for quite many Hong Kongers uh, to participate in, in the elections as if it's real, it's no, it's illegitimate. And 
there's not many ways you can do it legally to mobilize people politically. So, uh, but if you go to vote, and if we, there's a collective action of protest votes, I think that means something to the regime, at least to embarrass them. And then it's also a clearer picture for the international community to see how angry people are. That's why I, I, I think it could be a good idea if at least some amount of people would do it collectively to cast a blind vote. But Hong Kong authorities have already been trying to prevent election boycotts. They've issued charges against people who call on voters not to cast ballots. That represents another way in which these elections are far from being free and fair.